last night. I've been talking about him a, a lot over the last few days. We had the tribute show where the who's who of the poker world talk, got to talk to Mike a little bit. Um, a few days ago, that was that was um, good. It was cathartic. It was apparently very good to let him know, let his family know how much he meant to the poker world because they don't necessarily know, right? Like I can tell my wife that, um, you know, people like me, but um, <laughs> inevitably you never really know until they tell you and uh, everybody loved Mike Sexton. Really everybody did. It's kind of hard to find anybody who everybody likes. Everybody doesn't like me and I do my best to be likable. <laughs> and um, everybody loved Mike Sexton. So we, uh, we did that the other day. On a little coffee the other day, we talked about things we learned from Mike Sexton. We went through a few items. I'm going to make a full video out of that because I really did learn a lot from him. He was a great role model, especially for someone like myself who does not just want to be a poker player. I also want to be good at business and good at helping people. And I like commentating. I like being good at commentary, right? And I'm nowhere near as good at Mike as any of those, at any of those things. And um, maybe we'll get there one day. I'm still young. We'll do our best. But... I am very confident Mike would not want us mourning. He would want us celebrating. And um, I want all of you celebrating too. I don't want you all being sad or depressed about it. And, um, you know, to be fair, I, I cried a decent amount the first first day I heard that he was sick. Cried a little bit late yesterday when I heard about it. But um, he had a great life. I'm sure he had a lot of fun. I had fun every time I was with him. He seemed to have fun. And um, I, think he, I think he enjoyed his experience. And all he can really do in this world is help others, help them have a good time, and enjoy your experience. And I'm, I'm pretty confident Mike did that. He lived life to the fullest, and that is admirable and what we should all try to accomplish ourselves. So let's get out there and do it. Um, today, we're going to have an Ask Me Anything. I told you all you haven't asked me anything because you all had infinite questions for me the other day, and I was busy talking about Mike Sexton. So... Um, you can ask me questions, I'll answer them. My wife Amy's gonna be here soon. She will be here um, shortly. You can ask her questions too. Today's a, a, a holiday, I didn't realize that. Today's Labor Day. So I made a site for you, pokercoaching.com slash Labor Day. There, you can get a nice discount on pokercoaching.com, so check that out. Also, my book, Excelling at No Limit Hold'em, featuring, let's see if I can find it. Who's that right at the top? Not me. No, 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 no. Not me. Mike Sexton. Look at that. Mike Sexton helped write this book that is literally up for the greatest poker book of all time. We're down to the final eight books. And um, you can vote at jonathanlittlepoker.com slash vote. I would appreciate it. I, know, I see at least 17 people here today, including my wife, Amy. And this actually could be one of the greatest poker books of all time. The greatest poker book? Uh, that's probably Mike's biography, Life's a Gamble. But this one's up for the greatest poker book of all time. We're down to date. Amy can't believe it. She's like, what? What? Take a seat, Amy. Say hello. Oh, look, this is my special copy. Oh, I, I think only three of these exist in the whole world. I already donated one to charity. I think I have two left. Look at that. Right there at the top, Mike Sexton. You see that? All the best, Mike Sexton. How about that? Oh, look. What? How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm not in the shot. Oh, you don't need to be. Don't worry. It's kind of like a call-in show, you know, where you just where the guest calls in. Um, do you know anything about Mike Sexton? He was a really great guy. Talk louder. He was a really great guy. He was one of Jonathan's true role models um, in poker and in life. So that's pretty much the most important thing I'd probably take away about knowing about him. He was a good guy. Yeah. Everybody loved him. It's kind of interesting. Like, how, how does everyone love someone? Because, like, nobody disliked him. Like, I'm sure some people did not like his commentary style or something, but, like, nobody disliked him. How, like, how do you go through life interacting with literally everyone and literally everyone likes you? That's crazy. Well, it's very rare. That's why it's the only rare. person you can think of you can say that about. Yeah, there's, like, nobody. Like, literally nobody. Anyway... This book's up for vote. Go to jonathanlowpoker.com slash vote. Click the option for this book, not the other book. I'd appreciate it. And if we get through this round, there'll be another vote in a few days. You can go to it again. Click it again. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I told you that no one's going to be on on a holiday. <laughs> it's 
like 200 people here. You said 11. It was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. I know there's at least... I have a little counter down there. It has a nice a nice number, and that's not even all of them. Okay. Okay, um, what else? Mike Sexton has an autobiography. If you want to know why and how everybody loves Mike Sexton, you going to grab it? Yeah. You have to have longer arms. You don't have to stand up if you yeah. can have longer arms. It's called Life's a Gamble. I, um... Help get this together, which is very, very nice. Hold it down more. Um, what was I going to say here? My job at DMB Poker, one of my jobs among many, is to get good poker content. And they had never published a biography before. First one. And they were um, a little bit nervous about publishing a biography because who knows if anybody will buy it. Does anybody care about the lives of poker players? And I know from working with Mike Sexton in this book, his chapter is just a lot of fun degenerate gambling stories. I'm like, oh my God, people love this. People tell me this is their favorite chapter. And I'm like, oh my, well, he could clearly write a book, right? So we had Mike Sexton write a book. And um, anyway, check it out. It's called Life's a Gamble. He narrates it himself. If you want to hear Mike Sexton talk to you for a few hours about his life. He was in the military. He was a great dancer, a great ballroom dancer. He was a, a true... Golf player, he loved playing golf, and he loved playing poker. So anyway, check it out. It's called Life's a Gamble. We're going to ask me anything today, so feel free to type in whatever questions you would like for me or my wife, Amy. Apparently, she gets to take off on random Mondays. So that's lucky for her. I'm working today after this. Oh. Today's Labor Day. I know. We have a sale going on, pokercoaching.com slash Labor Day. If you like Ooh. learning poker from me, check it out. Nate says, well, if you're on Twitch and you want to subscribe for free, and you have Amazon Prime, it's literally free. If you never haven't signed up for anybody else's uh, subscriptions, that's cool. What do you want to talk about? What's on your mind? I to fix the camera angle so that I'm not like off on that one, but mm. I'm like overly on on that one. No, there's not really. Oh, okay. Right. If you're watching this on Instagram, you're getting a suboptimal experience, please go to mm. youtube.com slash pokercoaching. It'll be better. You get to see everybody's chat. You get to see whatever I have going on on the side. Your chat will be on the screen, et cetera, et cetera. Everyone here is just saying that uh, they love Mike Sexton, so that's nice. That's nice. When y'all moving to the South? <laughs> Ask Parnell Marketing LLC. I guess we're not. Never. What's it like to be married to a stud? <laughs> she, she's great. I like, I like her very much. She's lovely, and I'm, I'm a very fortunate person. <laughs> Do we play the World Series? A little bit. Um, there's a question here. What do you think you should spend your time on to improve your skills? Depends on what you're trying to get good at. Depends on what you're trying to improve on, right? Like if you're already very fundamentally sound, perhaps you want to be looking at mindset stuff. If you're new to poker and you're losing just because you're not good at the game, you need to be studying technical things. I think my book, Mastering Small Stakes No Limit Hold'em, is a good starting point. And I think if you are relatively new to the game for sure, go to pokercoaching.com slash fundamentals. I have a course there. It's like two and a half hours long. It has a lot of quizzes. It's completely free to help you get up to speed. How long have I been playing poker professionally? Oh my gosh. Since I've been 18 years old, maybe 19, somewhere in there. Depends on what you call a professional. How old am I now? 35. 30, you'll be 36 in December? Oh, 35. Mm -hmm. um, so how many years is that? 16, 17 years. Amy has a degree in theoretical math. That's not why she says 16 or 17. She can't do the math naturally with 35 <laughs> minus 18 is 17 hmm. true story yes yes do you have, did you always have to use a calculator in school uh, my dad would not let me use a calculator to uh to do my homework uh not until you actually like until pre-calc but even pre-calc and calc my dad would want me to do everything by hand and then check my work on the calculator while other kids were using their calculators to do their homework. Our little boy Thomas has started telling us no to everything. Did you tell your dad no when he said, I'm in calculus and uh, I'm not going to use my calculator? Well, I was 15, not <laughs> 19 months, so I think there's a difference. But, um, you know, it is. it can be hard sometimes being different or feeling like your parents are making you be different from what everyone else is doing 
Um, but I mean, it served me well. I understood the concepts better. I could do them myself. And we did sometimes have exams where you couldn't use calculators. And I certainly flew through the questions, I think, with greater ease than if I had been reliant on them from the beginning. So, um, you know, I, I appreciated the reason. It wasn't like he was trying to be mean. He was trying to help me learn. Did you play Mafia Wars or Galactica? Never. Or Galaga on don't your even, phone? I don't even know what those are. Or I never. What about Centipede? I never had any games on any calculator I ever owned. Um, you have a game tonight, a high stakes game. What should you do? Show up and play your best. Realize, look, in reality, if you have a game tonight, Watch pokercoaching.com slash fundamentals. If you haven't done that, I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do to improve substantially in literally one day. You can go through the homework at Poker Coaching. I think that's a good thing to do. You can go through and watch some hand history reviews from some of the best players. But in reality, all the preparation you've done before this tournament, yesterday, the day before, the day before, the month before, the year before, all of that is what you're bringing to the table. And adding one additional day to that, honestly, probably isn't going to be all that helpful unless um, you're just like totally novice. And if you're totally novice, I already told you, pokercoaching.com slash fundamentals. But in reality, go there, play great, be confident, and enjoy your experience. You think a Pio solver is a must-have. I do not. I think that you can Pro get... solver. I know what he means, though. Oh. Um, do you think that we can consolidate that information? I'm sorry. At Poker Coaching, we've essentially consolidated a lot of that information for you. We have GTO preflop charts, and we also have lots of content by like Michael Acevedo, the GTO expert, um, who goes through many of the common spots. How, do you have any trouble or awkwardness explaining what John does? What does John do? Am I a drug dealer? To new people. Yeah. Like children, I guess. So whenever you're talking like to children. new... children. Yeah, new people. New people, he, they mean like people in my life. Oh, Not, I thought you meant new, like new people. Newly entered to the world people? Yeah. No, he means new people to... to my, yes, I do. <laughs> And it depends on the audience. If I'm talking to... Um, Get on the camera a little bit more. Over well, here. it's not my fault you didn't set it up right. Because look how, like, look, I'm squished on the angle here, but I'm barely in it there. Yeah, whatever. Instagram, go to youtube.com slash post please. Can you turn it this way a little bit? It's fine. Okay. Um, yes, and it depends on the audience I'm speaking to. If I'm speaking to, and I don't mean to stereotype, but if I'm speaking to, you know, relatively young males, they're usually, I don't feel any awkwardness. They're usually pretty excited to hear what John does for a living. Um, if I'm speaking to females, some of them think it's cool. Some of them think it's weird. Um, if I'm speaking to older folks. They ask about new people specifically, okay. not old people. Oh, John. <laughs> um, it's actually probably the same split, though maybe some additional suspicion in older males as well than I would see in younger males. And I don't talk to children about what John does. Although we have told our, I mean, our, our kids know. I mean, Thomas is too young to understand, but James understands. James, James knows. He knows that Daddy plays poker. He knows that Daddy does videos. He knows that Daddy writes, you know, has books. Um, so... You know, he'll walk by John's uh, office that we're sitting in, um, and if he sees him working on the screen, he goes, Daddy's playing poker! And, you know, he gets really excited. He wants to watch, so he understands. The other it's day. also because he's been trained to understand because John's been putting him on all these uh, Instagram videos over the years. What do you call it? Little little poker little advice? Little poker advice, yeah. Little poker advice. Um, teaching James to say, good game, good luck. Um, looking at cards, we've started playing some um, like Go Fish and uh, and War with James, so he's kind of understanding cards a little bit. And we'll do the same thing with Thomas. You should put Thomas in more of your videos. He was on it just the other day. Right, but you should put him in more. Sure. Yeah. Um, the other day I was playing online, and James came and banged on the door really loud. It scared me to death. It's a see, it's like a see through glass door. And I said, "Daddy, you're gonna lose." <laughs> and then he walked off. But then I won, so hopefully he does that more. Yeah. He likes watching me play poker because I have a Yoda avatar. And James loves Yoda. He says, oh, Yoda. Yoda, Yoda. There's also an avatar of Nicky Manage wearing no clothes. And for some reason, he likes that one, too. He has developed a very um, specific reaction <laughs> to scantily clad women. And we don't know where it's come from. Well, na Nature. I get, well, it must be because it didn't come from any of us. We don't, you know, watch women like that on TV. We don't, haven't seen any movies like that. We don't have any pictures around the house. I don't dress like that. I'm, I'm literally still, this is a maternity 
This is a pregnancy exercise shirt, which by the way, I haven't exercised in who knows how long since having kids, but I'm still just wearing my maternity. So like, he's not getting it from watching me, but um, he saw the Nicki Minaj avatar. Wait, no, pronounce Nicki right. Minaj right. avatar, right. sorry. Um, and and Look, had like an Nikki extreme Manage. reaction not to, Minaj. ooh, Manage. who's that? And then we were on the street a few weeks ago, walking to Central Park, and there was this one, and it was like 10 a.m., right? So a weekend morning, and this woman <laughs> was walking down the street um, with this very, very slinky satin, like, dress that was like barely covering her chest and she kind of we were walking one way and she was crossing in front of us and James just <laughs> looked at her and said mommy what's that <laughs> <laughs> and like and then he had a similar reaction when a taxi drove by that had a like a Marilyn Monroe type picture on top of it mommy what's that so something about um provocatively dressed women is getting his attention that's at, good. All at, right. At the age of three, which is a little alarming, but I don't know. Where do you play in New York? I don't really. No. Play online sometimes. Play with friends every once in a while. Have you visited Pensacola? Yes, I've been there. Have I only been there once? I think you've actually only been there once. Oh, wow. Um, thought I've been there more than once. I went, I went once when John and I first started dating, but we stayed for like a week or something, and we went camping, and we went to the beach, and... We, he showed me around the different restaurants and stayed at his, you know, went to visit his family and his relatives. It was really fun. Louis? Louis? How are you supposed to say L-U- L-U- L-U-I-S? Louis. Louis says, you just watched the 10 tips to hold on your money and not go broke with Mike Sexton video. Please check that out, everyone. I mean, this video of Mike Sexton, where basically we just sit there and talk about um, the, the horrible mistakes we've made with money. And... Um, because I don't want any of you to make horrible mistakes with money. If you just search on YouTube, Jonathan Little, Mike Sexton, it'll come right up. Watch that if you don't want to squander all of your money. How do you deal with anxiety at the poker table? Biological conditioning. If you do something enough, eventually you won't care about it. Now, Amy, I don't feel much anxiety at all when I'm playing poker. I really don't. If you watch me stream, I'm sitting there losing money, winning money left and right. Don't care. How do you feel when you play poker? Let's take a break for a second, and then we'll come back to me. Jonathan doesn't feel much anxiety playing poker. He does not always handle anxiety well when he's not playing poker. <laughs> if he is driving, oh yeah, and he all of a sudden feels lost or unsure of what turn to take, he loses his mind and can't focus on anything. He doesn't know what knob is volume versus the air. He doesn't know how the blinkers work. He, you know, it's it's like he just completely retracts into himself and starts freaking out. And the algorithm malfunctions. It's always kind of funny to Oof. me how he can but perform so stoically in one way and um, not in another. And to be fair, I mean, I'm the I'm the same way, just in different aspects. So, to be know. can I pause real quick though? Yeah. To be fair, when you're playing poker. If you lose, it's okay. If you're driving a car and you run into a building or a car, it's not okay. But if you take the wrong turn, it doesn't matter. You just turn around and get back on the highway. Kind of like how you love saying to me, Amy, it just doesn't matter. It's true. That's Jonathan's favorite. His favorite thing to say to me since we've had kids and I've experienced some increased anxiety around the house in our lives, Amy, it just doesn't matter. Which he thinks is an effective way to calm your wife down. It's very nice. And it really just riles me up even more. It's actually not nice. I'm it's not. It's, it's, it's not him nice. telling me that yeah. my reaction and the way I'm handling things doesn't matter. <laughs> so, anyway, we're working Is it our... okay if it's not nice but also true? I think, well, I think something that you learned a while back is that people respond differently to... Uh, um, two things depending on their personality Mm -hmm. and so you and I have very different personalities and are motivated by very different things and so you know you kind of barking at me is maybe how you would get motivated but it has the opposite effect on me sometimes. I'm motivated by logic and Amy is motivated by nonsense. Oh very funny. (laughs) Very very funny. Yeah that sums it up everyone. That's it. That's That's the answer. That's That's the answer. That's it. I have to get better at that, and I'm sorry. Oh, so, sorry. So, me with anxiety. Anxiety um, at the poker table. How do you feel when you play poker? 
I, I'm like John driving a car and feeling lost. <laughs> I can't think of anything. But every can't, hand. Can't focus on anything. I don't remember what I'm doing. Uh, my hands start shaking. Um, although I think I've gotten better. Well, I've gotten better the nittier. Have, is that yours? That Yep. You should work, make that prettier. I painted it on the back wall. Sorry. Yeah, no, we should make that prettier for you. It's cute. It's, but it's not pretty. Well, it's designed for you. <laughs> um, you know, so I've had to work on that. The, I've, I've. It helps if I just kind of am. If I feel like I have to play every hand, which I've learned, you don't have to play every hand. Um, you know, it helps me relax a little bit because I can just focus on what I want to do next. Um, but the hands that I do play, I still struggle a little bit. But I, I think I'm getting better. Did you all know that Amy won the last poker tournament she played? Yeah, and then I retired. <laughs> and the, ta- the tournament she played before that, she final tabled. What would I? What would I say? By the way, like if I, if someone says, "What? What did I win? Did I win like a WPT sponsored charity tournament? Was it a WSOP? Was it just a charity tournament? Like it how was, would I describe it?" You just want You won a high stakes charity poker tournament. Okay, so if I ever have to put, like, a factoid about me in a trivia contest, yes. I want a high stakes also, charity poker tournament. So, honestly, so you won this, she won a charity tournament, what did you get, 1500 bucks? Something like that. Okay, but you final tabled the Education Reform Now charity tournament, that Which is a, a world w- poker tour. That was a WPT one, right? Charity oh, tournament. Yeah. And um, Amy was on TV. Amy has... A uncredited. S- uncredited, one uncredited second on TV. You got to play with Eric Seidel. David Einhorn. David Einhorn at the final table. That was fun. What's the funniest thing you don't know about me? That I don't know about you? No. you have to... Oh, no. that they don't know about you. Yeah. They know oh. almost everything about me, but they have to guess, you know, just a little bit more. But really, she doesn't. You all know more than me because I talk to you all way more than I talk to her. It's probably true. What is the funniest thing? Jonathan can't doesn't get so nervous when he drives because he doesn't want to kill his children. What is the funniest thing I know about you? Oh, that is a really hard question. How much sleep do we get per night? What I wish that? we would get more sleep per night. That is a really funny question. This I'm not very a, funny. This isn't maybe funny, but it's kind of silly. Jonathan can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just can't spell. <laughs> he really it is it is bizarre. Because it doesn't matter. How badly he spells. <laughs> Um, so I, I've always thought that was just odd. Um, and, uh... I can spell okay, let's get real. I can spell at least a 10th grade level. Uh, he's really <laughs> bad at spelling. Um, so I've always thought that was kind of weird. But the funniest thing, the funniest thing... She has to insult the intelligence level of me first. I don't know. Well, I've always thought that was kind. Of, that was the first thing that popped into my head. I don't. I'm gonna have to come. The funniest thing. What do you think is the funniest thing I know about you? I don't know. How does he write books if he can't spell? There's this pro thing called a computer that makes it to where you don't have to know how to spell. If you just get it pretty close, it'll figure it out for you. There's a program called Grammarly, by the way. Grammarly is a great um, spell checker and grammar checker. Doesn't catch poker grammar so well, but it's very very good. If you write anything, always run it through grammar. Bill Seymour, hello, my first poker coach. You go close with Mike and are all sad today with his passing. He used to have long discussions in the 90s about his dream, and he made it happen. He did indeed make it happen. If you all don't know this, poker used to be like in the back rooms and not respected, and it had no sponsors, and it wasn't on TV, none of that. And Mike Sexton pretty much single-handedly made all that happen, which basically made all of... The professional poker players' lives today happen. I don't think a lot of people realize poker could have just died, right? You look at, I don't know, backgammon or chess to a lesser degree. Backgammon's a good example, though. Backgammon's kind of just died. And sure, people still play it, don't get me wrong, but it's not like on TV, right? People aren't playing it for millions of dollars, et cetera, et cetera. And poker certainly could have gone that direction. Gin Rummy's another good example, right? Gin Rummy could have um, become the game if, if somebody took it over, but... Mike Sexton did that with poker and made it what it is. So thanks to Mike for that. Uh, what else? What else is funny about me? Well, funny, funny about what is funny you. Even, what does funny even mean? I was going to say funny about you. You are, I think, funnier than 
maybe people will realize. You are very quick and witty with words, mm. word choice. Can't um, spell them. Can't spell them. But I can get them out of my head really fast. Say them really quick. I mean, it's just sometimes I kind of have to pause and say, wait, did you say, yes, you did. That was very funny. <laughs> um, he's a very funny dancer, like, like move with the kids. He is very funny with the kids. He's always goofy and um, loving and plays so well with them and just, I think, is really helping them be very brave, up for anything kind of kids Um, because he is just very goofy and fun with them. Um, He loves to sing. He sings a lot. Only when I'm happy. Yeah, he sings a lot, um, which is really really neat to see. I'll have to, I'll have, if I can come back with like kind of a quirky, funny thing, I don't know, I'll have to keep thinking. The spelling thing still is the thing that I always thought was like the goofiest thing that I realized about him, that I was like kind of surprised. You don't have to know how to spell it to write. Apparently. That's lucky. Yeah, he, that's what he always, whenever I give him a hard time about his spelling, he's like, Amy, I've published... 15 bucks. It's true. <laughs> I'm a world-renowned poker author. <laughs> so. It's exactly true. It's exactly true. Um, how do you cope with losses? Not at the poker table, but in life. Like when, you know, loved ones and whatnot. So I'll tell you what happened with Mike Sexton. I cried a bunch for a day when I first heard the news that he was sick. This was two or three days ago. Um, Mike Mattis, I wanted to do like a tribute show for him. with. Longer. Which I like was all for. I tried to make sure all the poker players I knew heard about it who wanted to be on. So I tried to organize something good for Mike. Um, cried yesterday when I heard about it. I, I woke up in the middle of the night to go pee. I used my phone as a flashlight. I looked at my phone. I saw a text saying that he passed away. So I cried a bit in the bathroom. I stayed up for about an hour and a half last night. So, you know, now I'm tired. But that's fine. And um, I don't know. I feel, feel good about it. I mean, I had nothing but good experiences with Mike. I got to talk to him one last time before... Um, you know, on the show, he, he wasn't there. He wasn't there talking back, but we got to, you know, we got to, he, we knew he was listening. And um, it, it was it was a good experience for me, as good as it could be, right? And um, I think that I have not had to deal with any bad losses where, like, you know, your parent dies and you hadn't talked to him for a year and the last thing he said was mean. I've had nothing like that where I've had any sort of substantial regret. But to be fair, I've not had to deal with many people dying. I guess I've been fortunate in that way? I mean, I don't know if you had any instances. Um, <clears throat> you know, so I, you know, I, I've, I've had loss. Um, and yeah, I think the way that I cope with it is that I just cry and let it out. Um, and it's certainly, um, certainly helpful if, um, you're able to feel like you ended, you know, your last interaction were, were positive ones. Um, yeah. so. So try to make good interactions with people, right? Don't don't cause problems. Don't fight. Don't, you know, don't make nonsense. And uh, Mike, I, I had only only good interactions with Mike, and it seemed like that was the case for most people. And also, I realized he had a presumably great life, and he always enjoyed his time when he was around me and around the poker world, as far as I could tell. And you know, I'm sure no one's life is perfect, but I mean, in terms of a life I would sign for, I'd sign for Mike Sexton's life, I think. And um, gotta be happy for that. Yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> what else should we talk about? What's the funniest thing about Amy? Oh gosh, we're not gonna go there. Try. Amy, your husband is the best coach in the world. No, try the funniest thing. <sighs> Been busy thinking about funny things for me. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is that you care about a lot of nonsense. A- so good. That's, Amy. That's annoying. That's not funny. No, that's, that's funny. Annoying. It's fun- funny. Initially, <laughs> Amy will buy lots of stuff, but then return 90% of it. I haven't bought anything in a year. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't buy herself anything. She buys the boys stuff now. And um, Amy buys a lot of stuff. Why are you crying? That's sad. Yeah. Amy enjoys returning things, I think. You think that's funny? Why are you crying? Oh, you all made my wife cry. Why'd you do this? Express your emotions so they know what's happening. That's what we have to do on the show is we have to tell them what's going on in our mind. They can't read it. (sighs) 
What are you sad about? I just feel bad that you feel bad. That's all. I don't feel bad. I feel good. Mike doesn't want us feeling sad about him. He wants us celebrating the fact that he had a great life and he bettered the world, you know? He bettered the world. What more do you want from the guy besides he had a great life and he, en he enjoyed his time? That's, I mean, that's perfect. That is optimal. That's what I, I hope, hope I feel that way whenever I'm, I'm done. Zep Zep says you have an autographed copy of Life's a Gamble. Congrats on that. Good job. You know I have an autographed copy of Life's a Gamble? I can show it to you. Uh. Mike Sexton wrote to me. He says, To Jonathan, one of the great players, teachers, and ambassadors in the poker world. Thanks for all you do for poker. That's what he says to me. How nice is that? He also says thanks for having me in my book. You're very welcome. Anyway... That's nice here. You want to read it? Check out this book, Life's a Gamble. He reads the audiobook version. It's a lot of fun. Also, another book, which involves Mike Sexton, excelling at No Limit Hold'em, up for the vote for the number one poker book in the world. You get to pick it if you think it's the number one poker book. Check it out. Uh, go to jonathanlittlepoker.com slash vote and vote. We'd appreciate it. All right, all right, all right, all right. What is the Labor Day sale? We are putting PokerCoaching.com and the Poker Coaching Premium Membership for sale for you. Check it out. PokerCoaching.com slash Labor Day. It should be pretty self-explanatory. If you have any questions, send us an email. Support at PokerCoaching.com. Before you met or saw Jonathan, before you had a chance to talk, what were you thinking? My wife's crying right now. Don't make her talk right now. Come on. A Hollywood guy. Come on. Take, um. Read the room a little bit, buddy. Come on. <laughs> What was I thinking? Um, I wasn't looking at you in particular. Well, I guess the first thing I thought, I was embarrassed was the first thing. Because the first time I saw his face, I, his back was to me the first time I saw him. And when he turned around to speak to me, it was to ask me why I was there. And so I felt embarrassed and was about to leave. So my first reaction to seeing John was embarrassment. That's exactly how you have to start off with any woman. You have to make her think she doesn't belong. That way when she does belong, she feels great about herself. Uh, yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. We should probably edit that out. You can't say stuff like that anymore. <laughs> there. Huh. All right, let's see. Louis Philippe was in, uh, you see Louis Philippe at the bottom here? Yeah. Louis Philippe was in Montreal, and I was going to have a breakfast for my students, because I try to go have breakfast and, you know, be, be a good poker ambassador myself, um, before major tournaments. So we were there having breakfast. I told Mike Sexton about it the day before. He's like, yeah, maybe I'll come by. And then here comes Mike Sexton in. He hangs out and he has breakfast with us for Very an hour. Very cool. Well, before, cool. Before the show, and Louis Philippe was there. So that's cool. Definitely unique opportunities. Um, would you suggest the premium membership? I would if you plan on studying poker a decent amount of the time, right? I mean, if you want to go deep and learn from many of the best poker players in the world who I have personally selected because I've learned a lot from them and I know they're students and they've learned a lot from them. If you want full access to that, check it out, pokercoaching.com slash Labor Day. Look into the premium membership. Um, <laughs> yeah, go to jonathanlittlepoker.com slash vote. It's apparently close. We'll get there. We have 268 people here at least, so um, I think we'll get at least 100 votes from all of you. What? How did you feel after the embarrassment? Confusion? Sympathy? I think just shy. I think I just <laughs> felt, I mean, I don't know. He seemed nice, but he was asking me weird questions, so I kind of didn't know what was going on. <laughs> the second trick, once you make them embarrassed, is you make them confused. <laughs> that takes away all of her immense amount of knowledge and education and throws it away. Yeah. To where now, it's like, like when you're playing poker or when you're um, boxing someone. First thing you have to do is you have to confuse them a little bit so they don't know what's coming. And then, given you look like a disheveled young idiot, me I'm talking about, because, you know, young Jonathan Lola was an idiot. You have to go and you have to repair all the damage done by the initial first impression <laughs> when she looked at you. And then um, from there... You have to only carry on this, the relationship through the internet because if they see you in person, they just won't like you very much. So you have to craft a beautiful image of a reasonable human via the internet in a few carefully selected photographs. And then you make great effort to go see them 
a long way away. Amy was in New York City. I didn't really have a great reason to go like see New York City. I feel like you're describing catfishing. I basically, I'm, I'm doing my best to, me? yeah, I basically That's catfished it. my wife. Oh my goodness. And I got her. Oh my goodness. And then I reeled her in. Okay. Okay? Where are we going here with this? All right. How long have we been married? <laughs> I don't know. How old is our kid? Uh, you three, know how long we've four. been married. We've been married five years. I couldn't have made it easier on you. She really didn't make it easy. Our anniversary is Just. <laughs> August 1st, 2015. A yeah. nice, solid, easy number. 8 one So you now know, we're in 2020. So how long? We're in a year with a zero. Eight so. is the number of fingers on your hands. <laughs> one is the number of thumbs on each hand. And 15 is the number of fingers <laughs> and toes on one foot. That's how I remember it. <laughs> then you can't forget. Thank you for making it easy for me. Not like a nine sixteen o two or something. You know, that'd just be yeah. You're welcome. That'd be nonsensical. Okay. Excelling at catfishing by Jonathan Little. Yeah, I really don't know a whole lot about any of that stuff. Um. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know what else is going on in your brain, Amy. What am I doing this Sunday? I'm going to be streaming for you this Sunday. Check it out. PokerCoaching.com. We'll send you an email. We still have delivery service since they got the virus. Yes, we still get delivery service. Our doorman pick it up, et cetera, et cetera. And news on the masterclass. That is slowly happening, but surely. I had someone helping with me, but he got sick for a week or two, which delayed things. You've been by. talking about that for a while. Yeah, I know. Thanks. I'm very annoyed. <laughs> I'm very annoyed. It's become gigantic. The issue is I'm, I'm having someone help me who is not a great poker player. Purposefully. He's a great teacher. So I'm basically making him learn all the content in a way that a non-great poker player can definitively understand. So instead of Jonathan Little just making the course and say, here you go, I'm having someone who's a great teacher take what I said, here, Jonathan Little giving me the content, here to go, and then recrafting it to make it easy for non-great poker players to understand. And um, that, that takes a whole lot more work. One thing I've learned from working with him is that I am very good at... Um, I'm, I'm pretty good at just like winging it, but I could be way better if I took... A decent amount of time and structured things better and thought through things better and, and all that. I've been telling you that for 10 years. <sighs> <sighs> Something funny about Amy is she gives me a lot of great advice mm -hmm. and then I don't really accept it until somebody else tells it to me. The problem is, is Amy's always the first data point and I have to have two <laughs> data points before I do something. <laughs> I don't like just one, but I need to learn that Amy is a very, very solid data point. All right, what else? Have you ever made some giant project that took many months? You probably deal with that at work sometimes, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, deals that I work on take months, sometimes even a year or more to kind of... Um, but you're not working on it all day, every day. Yeah. Um, I'm not working on it all day, every day. Yeah. Well, whenever I'm working on it all day, every day, it gets done in two weeks and I, I ship it, right? Yeah, yeah. Is the masterclass going to cover cash games and terms? We already have a cash game masterclass, although I'm going to go through and build that out substantially. That's the next thing to do. I'm basically going to copy the structure of the tournament one to the cash game one. Um, cash game class doesn't deal with stuff like ICM. It, it is going to um, be a little bit more deeper stacked focused because tournaments are mostly played I don't know, 70 big blinds and shorter. So yeah. Anyway, yes, we already have a cash game master class, but we're going to go back and remake that substantially. What's your favorite? Pokers? I'm sorry. Sports, hobbies, etc. Raising two children. Um, what does Amy do? She is a wonderful human. <laughs> I like her very much. That's what I do. Amy's a great mommy. She I'm, takes care of me. I'm a lawyer with GE. I'm a lawyer at GE. What kind of law do you do? I specialize in, in renewable energy financing. So I'm a tax lawyer that helps structure deals where, you know, wind farms are getting built around the country. Um, and I analyze and negotiate those deals from the tax standpoint. For GE. So you do the taxes for windmills, basically. No, but oh. okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. You enjoy poker coaching premium. Much easier to digest than other sites. Well, that's the goal. We're just trying to do our best to make it easier and easier. I realized a long time ago, I'm not trying to educate the top 0.0001% of poker players. You want to know why a lot of poker training sites fail, Amy? I don't want it. Why? Because they don't know how to speak to regular 
Humans, they are trying to teach other poker players who are already very, 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 very good how to get 0.02% better. I'm trying to help people who are not the absolute best poker players in the world get substantially better. And also, I think a lot of people make content to try to make themselves seem and feel smart. They make the content to stroke their own ego as opposed to help people. And those are very different things. Certainly, you can feel good and help people. But a lot of people make it from the point of view of, I'm going to make this content to make myself seem as intelligent as I possibly can. But that's not the goal. It's not the goal at all. The goal is to help people. I don't know. Does that sound too egotistical to say? No? I always, I, don't, I never know how I come off in these scenarios, but there are a lot of very good courses if you already understand poker at a very high level, but a lot of people don't understand poker at a very high level already, which is why they're trying to get a course, you know? Um, let's see. That's a whole lot of smart Amy has. Johnson just reads cards and plays them. Yeah, that's right. Pit Vipers, trying to get on at GE. Cool. You like working at GE? I do. I love it. Would you say no if you did not? Probably not, but I do. But Amy, Amy, Amy does actually like it. All right, all right, all right. Matt says, the video I did with Mike Sexton where we sat, sat down and talked about holding on to money and plugging leaks was a great video. Please, everybody, go check out that and watch it on YouTube. Just search John for a little put Mike Sexton. It'll come right up. Just me sitting there talking to Mike Sexton for an hour about all the ways we've screwed up and how you can hopefully not screw up in the same ways. Do I go to New Jersey to play poker? No, there's not a whole lot of big games in New Jersey. Not, not to justify getting up and traveling for the day. Maybe one day, though. Maybe one day. You suggest moving to 2-5 if you're crushing... I'm sorry, 5-10 if you're crushing 2-5. Um, if you're properly bankrolled, yeah, probably. I knew that was the answer. <laughs> Amy could be a poker coach at this point. I was going to say, it depends on your bankroll. <laughs> it, it really does. Like, if you are definitively winning at 2-5, it's good to know that you can always go back to 2-5 and win again, right? So let's say... what's What do you need to play 2-5? Let's say you have... You're buying them for 500 bucks. Let's say you have, uh, I don't know, 20K. Okay? So let's say we have 20K. 40 buy-ins. Anything you get above that 40 buy-ins, if you're like definitively winning at 2-5, like, I don't know, 50 bucks an hour, 70 bucks an hour, like you're winning pretty well, um, you can then take, like, say you get up to 25K, take that 5K and go play 5-10 and see what happens. If you lose, it's fine. If you lose 5K, go back to 2-5, keep grinding it back up. And if you win, great, you're off to the races. Now, that's going to result in you stumbling back and forth a little bit and you have to be disciplined and be willing to move back down don't think oh i'm a 510 player now i'm never moving back down don't do that um but um yeah so you have discipline move down intelligently realize you're not trying to like cash out money from your bankroll if, if you need to like consistently pay the bills you may want to stick it to five and grow up grow a bigger bankroll etc because you you have an additional strain on your bankroll but if you're just purely trying to move up, just, yeah, push it within reason. Are we going to move out of the city due to the virus or anything else? Maybe. To be determined. If we move, it's not because of the virus. That that wouldn't be the reason we move. If we move, it's because of independent reasons, you know, either just needing more space or just different environments or being closer to my parents, you know, it's... The virus wouldn't affect uh, where we want to live. Okay. Everything's okay in the city. If you're trying to get into the energy industry, what would you recommend is the best way to learn about sustainable development? Well, some people study it in school. I didn't, um, but, you know, some people actually study environmental sciences, um, you know, environmental policy, um, any type of engineering that can then be applied towards, you know, working on the type of machinery that some companies develop, including GE. So that's probably, you know, one place to start. I, I but I, it's not the path that I took. I came at it from a, a law perspective, so, and without any focus on, on environmental, um, either environmental-related law or, or you know, even energy-related law. So I kind of fell into it a little bit backwards. But some people, you know, some colleges, some even law schools offer, like, the ability to focus in on those areas. So that's probably something to do. We need to have there's an ask about energy. There's class. also a lot of just um, industry-related seminars that, you know, some of them are free, some of them are not. So that's a nice way to just hear what people are thinking in the, in the industry also. You know a good free one? 
not a good free one. All the ones that I have are the ones you have to like pay mem- like memberships for. What's so. the best one? John, it, you can't answer. It depends on what someone's looking for. Mine would all be tax related. Mm. The best poker training site is PokerCoaching.com. Oh, of, of course. You can get a discount right now at PokerCoaching.com <laughs> slash Labor Day. Martin how did, Greppo, I, how did I miss the opportunity to <laughs> segue into that? <laughs> Martin Greppo is hosting a study session on a little after a little coffee at po- on the Poker Coaching Discord. Go to PokerCoaching.com, click in the Community tab, get on the Discord. He just took third place in the double deuce for 200 buy-ins. What's that, 6,000 bucks? No, 4,000 bucks. Nice. Interesting fact. Amy was one of the first people on Facebook. You were? I was. Yeah, I knew that. I was. You want to talk was, about that? Yeah, I was, um, I was friends with uh, Mark Zuckerberg in college. We had a class together. We lived in the same dorm together. Uh, not together, but we lived in the same dorm. Um, we went on a date once. <laughs> You blew it. I blew it. You had literally $5 billion in equity in your pocket, and you blew it. Well, that's how you know I'm me and genuinely me. I'm not chasing after anything. It's it's all Well, now you have to settle. Yeah, now I have to settle. So um, anyway, so when he was rolling it out, he was a couple years younger than I was. I was a senior, and he was a sophomore. Um, And so when he was rolling it out, he emailed uh, some of his friends to register and test it out, and I was one of those people. Um, I didn't actually use it that much in college. I was pretty shy, also insecure, frankly, like about, you know, because you had to invite and then you had to hope that they accepted the invite and I was really insecure, you know, who would accept my invites and so I was waiting to get invited, you know, by people rather than inviting people. I don't know, so I wasn't, I wasn't the best Facebook user. Um, and then eventually my account was hacked and deleted anyway. <laughs> And that's also when I learned that Facebook has non-existent customer service because I tried reaching out to every single like Twitter and Instagram handle I could. John tried to help me to get anyone at Facebook to help look into the fact that my account had been hacked and deleted. Like not disabled, deleted. You can't find any existence of it anywhere on the internet anymore. Um, All my pictures were gone. Everything was gone. Um, but it's okay. I really wasn't using the account that much um, anymore anyway, so it was fine. It was weird, but fine. <laughs> yeah, we don't have time to go into social media. I was going to go on a spiel about social media about how it's probably not optimal to be on it all day every day, but we're not going to talk about that because yeah. I have to go soon. Um, why do we have this privilege of having Amy here? Because it's Labor Day. And the kids are with my parents. That's oh, yeah, that's that. That's really why. <laughs> the kids that's are really gone. Why. The kids are not here. Thank goodness. Oh, gracious. Do you love having the kids gone for a day, or do you just miss them the whole time? I I do miss them, but it is it is the only time I get to just... Even though I'm not entirely relaxing, because, I mean, all day yesterday, we cleaned the apartment. We went through every cabinet, every drawer, every closet to try to, like, see what we could clean. We got some stuff ready for a friend of mine who's having a baby, so we could give her some of the stuff we weren't using anymore. So it wasn't exactly a day off, but just the fact that you don't have to be like on the schedule with the kids, cooking for the kids, putting them down, managing their tantrum, you know, that was a nice relief for a day. Um, I could take another day of it, but they're coming back today. (laughs) Oh, Oh, such is life. They're wonderful. They're wonderful, wonderful boys, but they're both at really interesting ages where they're just throwing tantrums simultaneously, so... It's a constant management of which of us has the, uh, the, the, the weakest headache at that time to be able to <laughs> take them. There's always a bit of like a... them down. There's always like... To make a read. Like, look, I'm are feeling you, okay today. Like some mornings, I just wake up and deal with the kids. Are you going to take them or are I going to do Are you going to take them or are I going to take them? Yeah. Other mornings, it's more of like a... I make a read and usually I'm the one who's in better shape. But some mornings, like, Amy, you got to go do it. Yeah. Sunday after a long stream, Monday morning... Yeah, Amy I, knows I, Monday morning's her day. Monday but, mornings, I do it, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's having kids is fun. You're happy you had kids? Oh, I'm blissfully happy. I'm just tired all the time. And I'm having, I think, a hard time adjusting to how to maintain, uh, maintain myself being so tired. Um, so we, we had a lot of conversations about that yesterday. We just decided we need to just go to bed earlier, even if it means kind of going to bed silly early you know where we're not really hanging out after the kids go to sleep as much um it's just 
it's required. I'm just not, I haven't, it, it, it's, it's hard to feel like yourself when you're, when you're exhausted. Yes. We've been exhausted for a few years now. <laughs> um, all right. We have to get going. So listen, a few things I would like all of you to do. Number one, if you like my work and you like the work by any of these people, we have Mike Sexton who passed away last night. Rest in peace. We have uh, Phil Helmuth. <laughs> we have Olivier Bousquet. Those two fight on Twitter every once in a while. We have Liv Bory, Scott Clements, all sorts of world-class experts. You know, you have the list right here. Oh, yeah. It's actually on the back of the book. I should just read it here instead of guessing. Jonathan Little wrote some <laughs> chapters here. Uh, anyway, please vote for this book. Go to jonathanlittlepoker.com slash vote. It's roughly 50-50 right now to make it through to the round of four. This is the best poker book for Maiden. And I'm not biased. I'm really not. I'm really not. Um... Please go vote for this right now. It'll take you one second. Go to jonathanlowpoker.com slash vote. Thank you. Number two, poker history gets lost. We don't have many great historians. There is a book back here. Oh, where'd it go? What's the book called? It's by Martin Harris. I don't see it. I must have put it somewhere. It's a book by Martin Harris called Poker and Pop Culture. Don't find it. Don't try to find it. Okay. Poker and Pop Culture. That book has a lot of great history. Look into poker and pop culture if you like the history. Also... Um, there's a big picture book called Poker Face 2. Maybe we'll take a look at that at some point in the future. But also, great poker history book, Life's a Gamble by Mike Sexton. Check it out, jonathanlittlepoker.com slash sexton. He has chapters in here about um, Stu Unger, Puggy Pearson, Doyle Brunson, Chip Reese, Billy Baxter, who got on the phone the other day and got to talk to Mike a little bit more. Talked about all, talking about all sorts of things. I was going to give you some, some of these titles here hooked on action amazing gambling stories transitioning to the business side of poker gambling on the golf course all of these things are discussed in this book there's even some pictures of mike mike and his family in here you all know mike was a gymnast there's a sweet picture of mike sexton doing gymnastics here you see this look at this guy he's just doing it he's crushing it anyway check out this book jonathanlowpoker.com slash sexton x s-e-x-t-o-n we have a Labor Day sale, pokercoaching.com slash Labor Day. That's probably ending today because it's Labor Day. Last chance to get poker coaching at a nice discount. Amy, thank you for being here. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? No, thank you for having me. Is Doyle Brunson still alive? He is. Doyle Brunson was on the call the other day. Doyle Brunson got to talk to Mike a little bit as well, too. Somehow I was there. So that was that was fortunate. And um, it was it was nice. They recommend Poker Snowy. Check out uh, my videos on YouTube. Search Jonathan Little Poker Snowy. It'll come right up. <sighs> What a great show. We're all going to miss Mike Sexton. We love him. We appreciate him. And we would not be where we were today without him. There were a few things that had to go right for poker to succeed. And um, Mike Sexton's existence, or someone like him, that did all the work that he did was a major one. And without that, we would not be here. So that's pretty cool. How's it to think that you would not have met me if Mike Sexton did not do all that work? Our boys would not exist kind of fun to think about mm -hmm. like seriously we would not have met because poker would not have been big on tv party poker would not have existed do you all know that i played a ton on party poker as a person i was a vip they flew me out to vegas to meet with mike sexton when i was 21 years old i think they thought they were having just like a bunch of old gamblers but it was like a bunch of 21 year old internet nerds and we all got to go have dinner with mike sexton when i was 21 years old i took my mom out there we went to the grand canyon we saw a bunch of shows it was a whole lot of fun and um Party Poker's been doing it right for a long time, and Mike Sexton made that site, so it's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Don't cry anymore. I won't. All right. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. There's a poker coaching study group happening. Go to Discord, Poker Coaching Discord. You can find the link to that in the community tab at pokercoaching.com on the bottom left-hand side. Get in there if you feel like studying a little bit more after this right now. Have a great Labor Day. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy. Thanks for having me. A weird way to say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>